Was it just a dream, or was it a ghost visitation? Tonight we're talking about lucid dreaming versus ghost visitations. First of all, why do we dream in the first place? If you think of it, sleeping is kind of weird. You lay down and basically die every night. And if you want to stay up, you can't, because without REM sleep, or rapid eye movement, which means that you are dreaming, our bodies and mind do not function properly. So dreaming is not an option. To me, that is kind of like being in prison and getting yard time. If we don't go outside or have access to the outside, then we become isolated and a bit mentally ill. The same thing for dreaming, apparently. If we don't allow our minds to wander around free, as in dreams, then our physical bodies and minds become ill. Interesting, don't you think? So does that prove that we are actually spiritual or energy beings? We need to shed our prison-like garb, called our bodies, and wander around our subconscious for at least six to eight hours a day. Now, just think about that for a moment. Now, on to the types of dreams and what we do while we are dreaming. First, there are normal dreams, where you explore your subconscious and work out the problems of the day or come up with exciting, creative ideas to solve problems. Then there are lucid dreams. The definition of lucid dreams are, according to Psychology Today, lucid dreaming is your chance to play around with the extraordinary abilities buried in unused part of the brain. Now remember, we only use about 3 to 5 percent of our brain. Geniuses only use about 5%. So what's going on with the other 90% of our brain? We haven't tapped into that yet. But when you dream, this is your opportunity to exercise and tap in to those parts of the brains that are obviously dormant. Regardless of whether you are superhuman in real life or not, lucid dreaming is a way for you to put the deepest areas of your brain to good use while you are sleeping. Here is a story that happened to me. When I was very young, probably around 11 or 12, I had a dream. My very first lucid dream. I dreamed that I was in a theater First, I was surrounded by many people who were laughing, waiting for the show to start. And then I saw a man about three or four rows down from me. And he turned around and it was James Earl Jones. Okay, I was dreaming. It was James Earl Jones. And he looked at me and he took out this huge knife like a machete and he held it up in the air. And he was about to throw it at me and then he said, stop it you can stop it with your mind and I looked at him I was like no I can't and he said stop it with your mind and then he threw the knife at me and I was like oh my god freaking out and then it stopped I controlled myself and I focused in and the knife stopped within inches not even inches of my forehead and it stood there for a long time like like suspended in midair And then I woke up, but I did it. I stopped it. So that was my very first lucid dreams. Researcher and expert in lucid dreams, Beverly DeRusso, says that even though the term lucid means clear, lucid dreaming is more than just having a clear dream. To have a lucid dream, you must first know that it's a dream and that you are actually dreaming. That's it. It doesn't require that you control anything in your dream. You know, like I did with the machete thrown by James Earl Jones. <laughs> Though control is what beginning lucid dreamers often aim at. People get attracted to lucid dreaming because they want to be able to do things that they can never do in waking reality. For example, taste fire or fly to the sun. More and more experienced lucid dreamers 
are realizing that the benefits of lucid dreaming, you can use it to explore the boundaries of your own agency and the limits of the universe. And I honestly believe that that is really who we truly are. We are these spiritual energy beings who can fly, who can transport ourselves from one time in space to another time in space simply by thinking about it. So what does that have to do with ghost visitations? Well, that is the next step in dreaming. A few years back, I had a reading done by a medium named Rebecca Rosen. She's the best. Within this reading, she answered a question that I had asked my soulmate who died over 20 years ago why he didn't visit me in my dreams as he used to did when he was, um, when he just died. He visit, visited me all the time. I said this to a room while I was alone and many weeks before I even came into contact with Rebecca Rosen, the medium. When I got the opportunity to get a reading from her, and before that, I didn't even know who she was. She started off saying that she needed to answer a question that Benny, my soulmate, had asked me or had had for me. I had asked a question she needed to answer it. She said that he said he could not visit me all the time in, in my dreams because he is not allowed to do so. So there you are, rules in heaven or the other side or the other dimension. Well, that kind of bummed me out because, you know, I hate rules. So that solidified to me that Rebecca was the real deal. Want to know more about Rebecca? Well, visit her at Rebecca Rosen, that's R-O-S-E-N, dot com. And she did not pay for this. This is not an advertisement for Rebecca Rosen, the medium. I am repping her only because she has proven to me that she is the real deal. She gave me a reading that was amazing and I may have to do an episode on Rebecca Rosen's reading to me because it has proved to come true several things that she said and a few things that she answered number one was this answer to me I was very of course grieving even after 20 years he was my soulmate so I'm still grieving that I didn't see him as much as I used to in dreams and she immediately answered that question for me because she knew that for him it was very important that he answer or find a way to answer that question. Our loved ones who have passed on are always trying to find a way to answer the questions we ask. Whether it be through a sign that you see, whether it be through answering a prayer, or whether it be something like this where someone else comes up to you and says, and it kind of answers a question that you asked yourself or that you asked them. So always be paying attention to what's going on around you because there is no such thing as coincidence. This is not a coincidence. She answered the question. Ghosts visit you in your dreams because it's an easier platform than materializing into this plane of existence. They are energy, and while you are sleeping, so are you. I have had many ghost visitations in my dreams. My mother visited me in my dream, and you can hear all about that in a video I did called True Ghost Stories, as well as my Near Death Experiences video. New dream of a lost loved one don't simply discount it as just a dream where you are working things out about their death. It is all about the feeling and the emotion that you have during and after the dream. Also, does the dream linger in your mind like a memory? If it does, that is a clue that it was more than just a dream. It was probably an actual visitation. So have you had a dream that seems so real that it stayed with you like a memory? Comment below and don't forget to check out the other videos in this series explaining the unexplained. See you next time.